Today, we're going to have ample amounts of time for question and answer, and I know they're very excited. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, I would really love to just kind of start diving into the preview section where you help us to understand a little bit about phototherapy, first and foremost, what that technology is and how you've leveraged that technology as you've developed and invented LifeWave patches and all the great things that they do for our bodies to support that optimization. Do you mind sharing a little bit of that with us? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, just to give a brief overview, uh, phototherapy has been around for at least a few thousand years and uh, goes back to ancient India, ancient Greece, uh, using different colors of lights to uh, treat the body of di different illnesses. And it's really been over the last 10 or 15 years that phototherapy has been uh, formalized into a science uh, with new information that has shown how light causes biochemical changes in the body. So what our patches do is stimulate the skin with very low levels of light, and this produces desirable changes in the body. Wow. It is amazing that it's been around for so long and that you've been able to really leverage that amazing that amazing science, that amazing technology and such a way to really be able to help our bodies to support how they're designed to work. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you, how you went from understanding a little bit about phototherapy. Well, I shouldn't say a little bit, a lot uh, to inventing these patches. And, and then how do these patches actually work to do the things that we know they're designed to do? Yeah, I, I actually, I started back in college. Uh, I was pursuing a degree in computer science management and biology. And I was interested in finding out uh, a way to develop technology to selectively destroy cancer cells using energy. Um, and later on, I was doing a project for uh, the US Navy through government contractors, a way to improve survivability for the crew of subs. And I wanted to use this experience that I had to uh, find a way that we could improve energy naturally. And uh, it took about three years of doing this research. And uh, I finally figured out a way to selectively turn on fat burning in the cell using a combination of different wavelengths of light. So a good way to think about LifeWave is that traditional phototherapy uses single wavelengths of light to uh, improve circulation and uh, do things like improve uh, collagen, but LifeWave is more sophisticated uh, because it's a way of turning on a specific biochemical process in the body, and that's something that traditional phototherapy can't do. Oh, I love that. I, I know that's what people get so excited about with the specific patches that have specific uses. And like you said, leverage those specific combinations of wavelengths, right, to do specific things. Can you help us understand exactly how putting a little sticker on us <laughs> uh, can work? How do the patches actually work with our body? I mean, we're not absorbing anything into our bloodstream or anything like that, right? So can you explain to us a little bit more about how that works? Sure. Uh, the patches contain organic materials. Uh, they're things like stereoisomers of amino acids and sugars, and uh, they're processed in such a way so they're deposited on a uh, polyester fabric and they form uh, nanoscale crystals when activated by your body heat will stimulate the skin with very low levels of light. And uh, what surprises people is that this can have an effect throughout the body. So these very low levels of light coming off the patch will stimulate the nerves and the acupuncture points on the surface of the skin. And uh, what we found uh, through doing over 80 clinical studies now is that within minutes, uh, this is gonna produce very pronounced uh, bioelectrical changes that are measurable with different types of equipment. And uh, of course, we've also have clinical studies which show that in as early as a day, this produces uh, biochemical changes in the blood and in the urine. So the effects of the patches are measurable and uh, they're highly significant. 
Oh, I love that. I know some people are really interested in the science and want to see what you just talked about there. Like, how do I know that? How do I, how do I know that what you shared with us is real? We do have all of our studies published, correct? Yeah. If people go to the science section of our website, uh, they can pull up our studies. Most, almost all of them are in English. So apologies to uh, our friends around the globe outside the United States. Um, but yes, that's where we have our studies posted. I love that. Uh, I know that for many, that's such a, a wonderful thing to be able to reference and know that what we say our patches do, we can prove it as well. I think that's just such a beautiful thing that not every company really is able to, to say about their products. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It, it's really important because when we make a claim about something that our product does, uh, we have to be able to have evidence to support that. And uh, most uh, companies, they might have one clinical study to support a product. If anything, uh, many nutritional companies in our industry, they rely on other uh, companies to do studies, but we don't do that. We invest tremendous amounts of money in our own research. And when we make a claim about what our products do, we have a clinical study to support that. Oh, I love that. So I know a lot of times when people are new uh, and just starting to use the patches, they're so excited to learn about how they all work. But I think something really important is for us to share just a quick overview of usage, meaning what, what are some suggestions, how we can utilize the patches in the best way, uh, times, location, and maybe anything within like how we're consuming water or any nutrition that could really make a difference in optimization towards those. Yeah, sure thing. Actually, let me go ahead and share screen here. And we can kind of start with each of the patches. Um, X39 is a product that can be used either during the day or in the evening. Although our clinical studies have all been with using X39 during the day. Um, this is a course used to elevate GHKCU, which is a glycine histidine lysine. Um, if people are vegans or vegetarians, it's possible they may not get enough lysine in their diet since that's often found in, um, in different types of meat or dairy products. And um, also, of course, because this peptide binds with copper, people should include foods that are rich in copper in their diet. Now, one of the best sources of copper is liver. And liver actually has a tremendous number of health benefits. Many people don't like the taste of liver. They don't get it on a regular basis. So I've got an awesome option. Chocolate is very rich in copper. Now, cacao, of course, not the milk chocolate that we get here in the United States. I won't name any brands, um, but uh, yeah, we, we want something like dark chocolate, which has the polyphenols, antioxidants, and copper. Um, so we wanna make sure we have enough copper in our diet. And of course, with any of the patches, we wanna have a uh, diet that's rich in protein, healthy fats, and vitamins and minerals to support creation of new tissue in the body. Um, our X49 patch elevates, of course, another stem cell peptide called AHKCU. And this is an alanine histidine lysine. And alanine especially, uh, which is used to make uh, the AHK, is found in meat and dairy. So for vegans, that are, or vegetarians that are interested in building muscle, improving brain function, supporting the health of their heart, I would encourage them to uh, use an alanine supplement, specifically beta alanine, and this can support the function of X49. Um, David, or can energy I ask you a quick question about that? Sure. Um, I, I know that, you know, when you're talking about what the patches do and the things that it's elevating, you're recommending some supplements that can be taken. Uh, in addition, if, we're, if the patches are elevating certain things, why is it important that we are supplementing or that our nutrition is, is correct? What, why does that matter when it comes to using the patches? Yeah, we want to make sure that we have the raw materials 
in our body to make the peptides. So if someone has a diet that is deficient in the amino acid alanine, they're not gonna be able to make AHK. So they have two choices. One is they can include foods in their diet that have alanine, or they can supplement uh, with beta alanine, uh, which uh, is a form of alanine, and this will be used to manufacture uh, peptides in the body. And it's widely available and, and very inexpensive. So a good way to look at this is that if we get an injury, uh, let's say that someone burned their skin, if we don't have protein in our diet, uh, we're not going to have the raw materials that are needed to heal the injury. And so this is the same thing. We, we need the raw materials to make these peptides. Awesome. And the patches just signal our bodies to make them with the raw material we have, correct? Yeah. The, the beauty of this is let's use glutathione as an example. The half-life of glutathione is uh, seven minutes. So if we were to get an IV of glutathione, uh, the levels would go up and down within a period of about an hour. Now, the rate-limiting amino acid uh, for glutathione is cysteine. So uh, let's say that we're getting enough cysteine in our diet. Uh, eggs and whey protein are excellent sources of cysteine, uh, and we weren't using the patch. That would only give us a very mild increase in glutathione levels. But because the patch is signaling the body to make glutathione, we can elevate our glutathione levels much higher than normal and get detoxification and anti-aging effects that we wouldn't normally get. I love that. I think that's so helpful to understand because I think sometimes people confuse because we're so used to taking products to do certain things where our patches are so different, right? It's not just about consuming nutritionals. It's helping your body to do what it's supposed to do and having that raw material in place. Thank you for clarifying that. I appreciate it. Ah, uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And, um, yeah, I mean, just to go through the rest of the patches, the energy patches were our very first product and they're designed to elevate fat burning. Uh, as long as people are consuming plenty of water to facilitate energy and detoxification, um, that would be great in terms of that product. Uh, carnosine uh, is a dipeptide, uh, an alanine, histidine uh, peptide and uh it's used to improve cognitive function, uh, supports lean muscle and performance, and also improves the health of the heart. Uh, glutathione, as we were just touching on, is the body's master antioxidant. It's associated with longevity. And uh, there's tens of thousands of clinical studies on glutathione now. It's incredibly important. And uh, it's because it's found throughout the body, that'll give you an idea about how important it is to protect our hearing, our eyesight, um, even our, our detoxification pathways is what glutathione is really thought of. Um, we have a product for animals called Acculife, and we've got clinical studies on using Acculife to relieve pain in dogs and horses. Uh, over the years, we've got some really interesting stories of different types of animals that people have patched uh, with Acculife. Uh, but just know that it is uh, essentially the same as Ice Wave, but we have it registered and studied for uh, with animals. Eon is a product for reducing stress, and it elevates a liver peptide that activates the primitive immune system. And as a result, it is a broad spectrum anti-inflammatory. So people that are suffering in pain, especially with inflammatory disorders like Parkinson's or, uh, or arthritis, uh, we're not claiming we treat those disorders, but this is a product that would be great for helping to reduce and manage pain. Of course, uh, stress is something that is closely associated with aging. And Eon is a great product to use either during the day or at night uh, for reducing stress. If you're using it at night, you can find uh, that it will actually improve the quality of your sleep. 
Ice Wave is, of course, our first pain relief product. Uh, it's very simple to use. It's a two patch system. So you would simply apply the tan patch to the pain and then uh, place the white patch near it. And uh, people will find that in the first two to three minutes, uh, 50 to 100% relief of pain. Uh, Silent Nights is a product that elevates melatonin. And some very interesting research now is showing that melatonin is an extraordinarily powerful antioxidant, maybe even more powerful than glutathione. Um, and uh, what we have found through our studies is that this can increase the length of sleep more than 60% in addition to the quality of the sleep. Uh, SP6, a lot of people think of this as for weight loss. It's actually a weight loss aid in that it helps people with their cravings. So you would use SP6 along with diet and exercise as part of an overall weight loss program, but it's used to get your cravings under control. Olivita is a product that elevates the peptide epithalamine. Uh, this is a pineal peptide and it's used to reduce oxidative stress. So this actually improves the quality of the skin from the inside out. And of course, reducing oxidative stress has other numerous health benefits. And then finally, Nirvana is part of a system for elevating beta endorphins. And uh, beta endorphins are feel good hormones. Uh, in addition, uh, they're very, very powerful at relieving pain. But interestingly enough, when you elevate beta endorphins, they trigger the production of collagen. So people that are using Nirvana for relaxation, to relieve anxiety, get the side benefit of reduction in the appearance of lines and wrinkles. So Emily, that is a overview of the patches and what they do. Thank you for that, David. I know it's always nice when we have our deep dives into our products, but having just a basic overview generally of how all the patches work and the benefits is so helpful. So thank you so much for doing that for us. Really appreciate it. Yep, absolutely. Well, I know that everyone is on this call, first and foremost, to hear from you that we always love learning from you, but I know many people have specific questions they want to ask of you. So just for everyone's benefit, just so everyone knows, we do have those that are participating tonight that speak English, Spanish, Japanese, and Chinese. And we do have staff on hand to assist us with those questions. So the way this is going to work for everyone is if you have a specific question that you would like to ask David, feel free to use the raise the hand icon at the bottom of the screen, and we will select uh, your name based on the order in which they pop up, and we will unmute you, and you can ask your question specifically to David. If you are speaking Chinese, Japanese, or Spanish, we do again have staff on hand that can translate that question directly for David here live on the call, and he'll be answering those and then listen to the translation of your selected language through our interpreters. So um, we are also going to be switching back and forth between live question as well as our Q&A section. So if you have a question that you may be a little nervous to say out loud, no problem. Feel free to pop that in the question and answer section and we'll get to as many questions as we can. We have about 30 minutes, so we should be able to answer quite a few questions, but that's really how we're going to move forward with this exciting portion of the call. So you ready, David? Absolutely, let's do it. Okay, we're going to start with our first our first guest here, we have Richard, looks like Clint, Clinchy. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and unmute you. So Richard, if you can hear us here, I'm gonna ask you to unmute and please share your question with us. I got it. Uh, good evening, David. Uh, good evening. Uh, this question comes with a background of about 30 years with soft medicine. And okay. I understand that you did something with NavSpec War early on that led to the creation of your products. It's gonna help me to encourage my military friends to get involved if I know something of the background with NavSpec War and what you did, sir. Thank you. Okay, uh, well, I had a company in Georgia 
And what we were doing was working through government contractors. Uh, this was General Dynamics Electric Boat and Newport News Shipbuilding. And uh, we were working with emergency systems. And uh, at the time, what we were doing was developing things like emergency oxygen supplies and emergency power generation. Um, and I gave a presentation on a new technology. Uh, people at General Dynamics Electric Boat uh, were very impressed with that. And I was invited to be on a design team for a mini sub. And uh, the crew of the mini sub were Navy SEALs. And the objective was to see what could we do to improve their survivability. So um, after giving it some thought, uh, I thought, well, people are using pep pills, caffeine, amphetamines to, uh, to stay awake. And I was personally in objection to that because I've been interested in health and fitness my entire life. And I thought, well, there has to be a better way to uh, improve energy and stamina. And uh, that's what led me to uh, research uh, this line of thinking. 9-11 um, happened. And so uh, the government was more interested in weapons than emergency systems. And uh, so I left and decided to focus on civilian applications. And that's when I started LifeWave. So uh, this didn't formally uh, make it into the uh, military. And uh, after a few years, uh, when things settled down after 9-11, um, I did go back to the Navy and uh, also went back to the uh, Army with this, uh, but faced a considerable amount of red tape. It was much easier uh, marketing a, a product for fat burning to civilians. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you for that. Okay, we have a question in the Q&A from Jane Schaefer. Hi, Jane. Uh, she says, hi, David. Many people are experiencing noticeable hair shedding a few months after recovering from COVID. What is your thought on this? And is there anything you can recommend? Sure, you know, what we're uh, finding, of course, uh, not ourselves, we've done two clinical studies now on the effects of the mRNA vaccines, uh, which are pretty shocking. Um, and people should be aware of, of what's going on with that. But certainly COVID has produced a number of well-known and documented side effects, including um, inflammatory and oxidative stress. So I think what people usually focus on is myocarditis. Uh, however, what's being shown now is that post COVID infection, there can be a significant neurological damage in the brain. Some of this can show up as loss of hearing, loss of smell. Um, I had three uh, family members that got infected with COVID and they experienced uh, for a period of time uh, they were smelling smoke all of the time. Uh, fortunately, this eventually resolved itself. So this is all related to uh, inflammatory, elevation of inflammatory stress. And uh, antioxidants are really the best way to deal with this, increasing antioxidants. Uh, so because this would be in treatment of a medical condition, I can't recommend our products since they're wellness products, but um, I had seen uh, one medical doctor specifically was recommending our lipoic acid, uh, PQQ, which is a nutrient for elevating the number of mitochondria in the cell, and uh, NAC, which of course elevates glutathione. Um, I've had great experience uh, recommending allergic acid. I've had family members uh, that had some uh, symptoms post-COVID infection, and they were able to resolve that with allergic acid. Allergic acid is found in pomegranates and red raspberries. So yeah, this, this is all to say I would deal with this uh, like pretty much anything else, uh, taking a broad spectrum of antioxidants to reduce the inflammatory stress. Perfect. Thank you so much for that, David. 
Uh, we have, uh, looks like Lori Doustu. I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, it looks like she just popped off. So um, we're gonna see Christina Flatley. Uncle Christina, do you wanna share your question with us? Let's see here. There we go, how's that? Perfect. Okay, so I have two different questions. Um, one is about the X39 and I can easily teach people how to put the patch, you know, at that kind of right below the neck point on the bone. Okay. Um, but the placement near the belly button is very confusing. Some people don't want it to show because they wear their hair up or whatever. So um, the male model that shows that location, um, you know, he has a very long lower belly. So where does, I don't know where that goes. Does it, uh, where that placement is in the front, in the pelvic area? Okay, so here's the great news. Um, in our clinical studies, we use the patch uh, either behind the neck or just below the belly button, literally just below it. Uh, but the patch can be applied almost anywhere. Now, healthcare practitioners, uh, they sometimes like to apply that patch to an acupuncture point. It's not necessary as long as it's coming in contact with a nerve cluster on the skin, which is just about anywhere. Uh, the patch is going to function just fine. So um, as an example, people that have had an injury um, or they're experiencing some pain, they might want to put the patch on the knee, for example, or the foot, no problem at all. Uh, and just about anywhere below the belly button, um, there is going to uh, be an effect. Um, there's acupuncture points there, but again, they don't have to be applied to acupuncture points just anywhere on the skin. So you could apply this along the midline of the body at the pubic bone, you know, which would be about four finger widths below the belly button. Um, so the placement is not really critical to the function. Okay, great, great, thank you. And then my last question is, um, I, a potential customer tried sample patches but she was super allergic to the plastic on the patches. So is there an alternative product for her with a different, you know, so, so she won't have that. She gets very, very red when she. Yeah. On. Yeah. So uh, we use a hypoallergenic adhesive from 3M, uh, but we still get about one in 10,000 people that are going to have an allergy uh, to that adhesive. Now, the good news is that the patch does not have to be in contact with the skin. It just needs to be in proximity. So you could apply the patch to the um, underside of the clothing and it would still work. Oh, so, really? Wow. Yeah, as, as long as it's near the skin, it's totally fine. Um, so you could, you could adhere the patch to the clothing and uh, is, because the patch is located next to the skin, it, it would work just fine. So um, it wouldn't, uh, it would have to be the right side, the, the uh, adhesive side facing the skin, even if it was on the clothing. So it'd be the- uh, No, it would not have to be. Oh. It wouldn't have to be. It, yeah, it's insensitive to the uh, direction. So if you wanted to stick the patch to the clothing and have what would normally be the top part of the patch facing the skin, that would be totally fine. Oh, great. Thank you. I will tell her. You're welcome. All right. Well, good questions for sure. Um, we actually have uh, a question in Chinese. So I'm going to actually call on Sophia. Sophia, do you mind uh, sharing uh, the first Chinese question listed in the Q&A with David, please? Hello. Hi, David. Uh, the question from Taiwan. So why do I sometimes sleep better when I use Yang and I, but sometimes I can't sleep? Mm. Yeah. And Sophia, it's very nice to speak with you. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, but very nice to, to speak with you, Debbie. Yeah, so Eon, um, I often recommend Eon for sleep uh, because it does reduce stress on the nervous system. Um, it's not the same as silent nights. It's not going to directly elevate melatonin, um, but it does work because it tends to calm the nervous system and get people in uh, the state where they can have a deeper sleep. Now, of course, sleep is very complicated. And Emily and I were uh, speaking about that on the earlier LifeWave Connect today. Um, to summarize, it's best not to eat too late and stop eating, uh, let's say about three hours uh, before you go to sleep. Uh, it's very important that uh, people be in a room that's completely dark because even small amounts of light can inhibit the production of melatonin, which allows us to sleep. Another factor that affects people, and this happens with my kids, and I'm sure a lot of uh, people that you all know, is we tend to be up late uh, looking into our phones, uh, using iPads or computers, and the blue light coming off of these screens will inhibit the production of melatonin and interfere with our sleep. And then finally, we're all busy today. And uh, it's very often difficult to slow down. And I recommend to people using, uh, it doesn't have to be every night, just on occasion, the amino acid taurine. Uh, this amino acid is uh, famous because it's found in Red Bull. Um, and it's what blunts the stimulating effects of caffeine. But taurine is uh, an amino acid that's found naturally in the brain and in the heart and can help to relax the nervous system and improve the quality of sleep. So uh, sleep can vary from one night to another depending on diet, what time you eat, if you had caffeine later in the day, uh, or if you just simply have too much light in your room. So these are all some things that people uh, can do to improve their sleep. Uh, one last tip, uh, keeping the feet warm is a way to improve sleep. Uh, so simply wearing a pair of socks or putting a blanket on the end of the bed to keep your feet warm uh, will improve the quality of sleep. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for your support, Sophia. It uh, looks like I have uh, Miss Juliana Coles here. Uh, let me go ahead and unmute her so she can ask the question. Juliana, are you there? Maybe. Well, let's give it one more shot. Okay, unfortunately, we'll have to uh, move on. Okay, so I have Gina Wilson. Gina, can you share your question with us, please? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hello. Hi. Hi, we hear you. Hello. Hi, yes. Thank you all for this uh, call. And thank you all for all the wonderful research you've done with LifeWave. Um, I'm new to the company, but I'm excited because I injured my left shoulder about three years ago. I do not know if it's a torn rotator cuff, whatever that's called, but the patches have taken away the pain completely. I was like at a 15, if you go from zero to 10 and just after using the patches, like uh, three months, no pain at all, none. Ah, congratulations. That's awesome. I'm excited. Yes, I do. I do the 12 hours on and then 12 hours off. That's what I do. So my husband, you guys, was recently February 9th diagnosed with deep vein thrombosis in his inner left leg. They believe it's possibly one of those long hauler things that can happen to people after COVID. Um, but he loves the patches because he works real hard. He's a master plumber. So they help him to not have pain during the day, during recovery, the energy patches are great and all of that kind of stuff. I was just wondering, is there anything you could possibly recommend among our patch selection that might help him in that area with the CBT? 
Well, uh, so first of all, we're not allowed to make any recommendations on using the patches to treat okay. medical conditions. I understand. Um, so there are a couple things that I can recommend outside of patches. What I'd say generally for pain, um, another patch to use with X39 would be Eon yes. uh, because it's an anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. uh, so he may find additional benefit with that. Great. Now, uh, so generally for thrombosis, there's, uh, an, there's quite a few things actually that can be helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, first, as a general anti-inflammatory, I would recommend curcumin. Mm -hmm. uh, curcumin is relatively easy to get. Um, use a BCM95 extract. Okay. Uh, you'll find that on that some manufacturers use that. It is a clinically tested extract of, uh, and per, of curcumin, and uh, it's been shown in studies to work. Um, another thing that you could ask, he could ask his doctor about would be vitamin K, uh, mm -hmm. and you would use vitamin D and vitamin K together. Mm -hmm. And um, so vitamin K, um, effectively what it's going to do is improve the cardiovascular system mm -hmm. and, uh, that can help to alleviate thrombosis. Um, when you uh, take vitamin K and there's a uh, two different versions of it, MK4 and MK7, um, what it will do is start to remove, uh, calcification that is in the arteries, which is obviously a really good thing. So you take vitamin D, let's say 5,000 IUs per day, and that will help to uh, increase the amount of calcium that's going back into the bone. So you don't get too, much, too many calcium ions in the blood. Okay. Um, another thing that's very, very good uh, for the cardiovascular system that can help to alleviate thrombosis, I mentioned earlier, it's called elagic acid. And this is found naturally in red raspberries and uh, pomegranates, mm -hmm. um, you'd have to consume a lot of red raspberries and pomegranates. So it's just as easy and better to take a supplement. Okay. Um, then the final thing, but you'd have to go to a doctor for this is uh, something called DMSO. Uh, it stands for dimethyl sulfoxide. And um, you can, it's a liquid and you can only take about two tablespoons of this per week because it's a very powerful blood thinner. Mm, um, okay. But the, the value of DMSO is that it goes everywhere in the body because it's a solvent, but it's a very powerful anti-inflammatory. So for conditions like thrombosis, uh, it can be invaluable and it's also very inexpensive. Okay, they currently have him prescribed on a blood thinner, Zeralto. Um, yeah, so this is why he would have to speak with a, uh, doctor, yeah. his doctor because you don't want to combine DMSO with other blood thinners. That could be dangerous. Yes, sir. I got you. Yeah. Well, thank you so very much. I really, really appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being here again. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on your success. Yes, we're looking forward to much more. <laughs> thank you again. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, well, I know that we still have time for a few more questions, and uh, I believe we have a question here in the Q&A uh, from one of our Japanese members. Um, Keiko-san, do you mind uh, sharing what that question is with us, please? Sure. Hi, Emily. Hi, David. Hi, Thanks Keiko. for this uh, great opportunity, and we got so many questions from Japanese members. The question is, I put ice wave on my back pain but some people get rid of the pain in 10 seconds and others don't. What the difference is between those who work and those who don't? And the real time question is why energy and ice wave are set up white and tan? And why white patch is on the right side and tan patch is left side? Okay, so those are great questions. Uh, let's start with the effectiveness first. Um, what we have found over the years is that the speed at which ice wave works can be attributed to one of three things. Uh, the first is the placement. 
um, the placement can make all the difference to getting relief in 10 seconds or 10 minutes. So uh, placing the tan patch on the pain and then moving it around the pain uh, in the clock-like fashion as we teach uh, or other patch placements is very important to getting rapid results. Another thing that we find, and this is something in uh, traditional oriental medicine, is that people can have deficiencies of electrolytes like magnesium and calcium, but especially magnesium. So if there is uh, someone has a poor diet and they are low in magnesium, it will affect the speed at which they can get pain relief. Um, and then finally, dehydration. Uh, many people today do not consume enough water. Uh, they consume too much coffee. And this can affect the speed of their results. So uh, what some of our members like to do is when they do a demonstration with ice wave, they encourage people to drink a full glass of water to help uh, support the results. Now, the reason for the two patches is that the white patch is positive and the tan patch is negative. And this is to match the bioelectrical polarity of the body. And bioelectrically, generally speaking, the right side of the body is positive and the left side of the body is negative. So we match the polarity of the patches with the polarity of the body. When we're patching for pain, um, we, this is more localized and we're just trying to get energy to start flowing again. Well, that really was a great question. And I loved your answer, David. I Thank learned you. something new every time we're on these calls. So I hope everyone's taking notes. Okay. So I think we still have time for a few more. Um, I Alrighty, have, let's do it. I have uh, Pat Walzer. I'm going to go ahead and put you on there. If you can unmute yourself. There you go, Pat. Hi. Hi, David. How are you? Hi, Pat. Great, Pat. How are um, you doing? I have a question in the Q&A, but I will ask it now. Um, I've noticed a few times now a silvery, silvery or metallic film on the patch after using it. And I was wondering if it could possibly be indicative of detoxing maybe from metallic fillings or other metals? Yeah, this is more common with the glutathione patch. And there's a number of ways to get toxins out of the body. Um, it would, it, let's say that you take someone that is a smoker, uh, as an example, and they were to apply the glutathione patch right to the throat. Uh, what they would find is within a minute or two, they would start to taste uh, heavy metals or nicotine uh, taste in their mouth and starts to come out of their body. Um, urine, especially, will take on an unpleasant odor when you elevate glutathione and increase detoxification. Um, and of course, through sweat. Um, this is one of the reasons why we encourage exercise because exercise helps to move the lymphatic system and get toxins out of the body. So it would not be unusual to pull toxins through the skin. And, uh, you know, keep in mind that there is a increase in temperature underneath the patch. So the pores on the skin are gonna be open. Uh, so it would not be unusual to pull toxins through the skin. What a wonderful side benefit. I'm thinking it might be possibly coming from all the uh, mercury fillings in my mouth. It's, it's possible, it's possible. Uh, what, what can happen when people have mercury fillings 
uh, you can try this uh, today, is uh, in front of a mirror, put your uh, tongue on the roof of your mouth. And if you see a lot of gray uh, under your tongue, that's more than likely mercury. Um, and so what you would definitely want to do is focus on glutathione. Uh, you might want to take some, make sure you get extra dairy products like eggs and whey protein in your diet or take an N-acetylcysteine supplement um, to support your glutathione levels uh, because you definitely want to uh, support your detox. Um, also make sure you're drinking lots of water and getting enough fiber in your diet since fiber is necessary to trap toxins and pull them out as of course is water. Great, thank you. And uh, my second question, I've heard this question before and I didn't really understand that there was an answer to it. So I'm gonna ask it. Okay. Um, I read recently that, oh geez, how do I word this? I'm sorry, I, I wasn't prepared for this. That okay. there's a correlation between um, copper and breast cancer, you know, levels of copper in the system and breast cancer. And I was wondering, is there a need to be concerned about the copper peptides? Maybe you don't have an answer, but maybe you could look into it if, if not. Oh, I definitely have an answer. So some people do not metabolize copper very well. And um, so getting too much copper in their diet would be a concern. Now, for most people, this is not a concern. And there are clinical studies uh, dating back to the 1950s which show that if people get a very, very large amount of copper at once, let's say 50 milligrams, within two hours, the copper levels have come back down to normal. Now, uh, keep in mind that in a uh, piece of liver, people could get 25 or 30 milligrams of copper all at once. So uh, there are people all over the world that consume liver on a regular basis and they don't develop copper toxicity uh, because the body has uh, the ability to detox and remove the excess copper. Um, the recommended daily allowance of copper is anywhere from one to three milligrams per day, and most people aren't getting enough copper in their diet. Uh, as a matter of fact, the safe limit of copper on a daily basis is about 10 milligrams. So this is something that is only going to affect uh, some people. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that the X39 patch is not putting copper peptide into the body. It's naturally signaling the body to elevate copper peptide. Um, copper peptide is something that our body has naturally, and as we age, it decreases. So what we're doing is we're restoring the copper peptide levels to more youthful levels. We're not boosting the levels above normal. Um, there's also significant literature uh, that shows that elevating copper peptide actually enhances immune function. And so I'd encourage you to uh, do a search on that. And I think you'd be pleasantly surprised to find out how copper peptide is used um, for different things that I can't mention. <laughs> Thank you so much, David. You, you're very welcome. Very informative. Thank you. Okay, David, we're pretty much out of time, but I, I know we have one last question from our, our Japanese members, if you're okay to, to do one more. Absolutely. Okay, Keiko, can you please share with us the last question from one of our Japanese members, please? Sure, thank you, Emily. The question is, is, uh, is there an effect way and which patch can be used to balance the hormone after childbirth? Uh, what was the first part of that question, Keiko? Is there a what? Uh, which, which patch can be effective after childbirth? Okay. To balance the hormones, right? That's right. Okay, so first, we have not 
performed clinical studies on women that are nursing or pregnant. Um, I'm also not a medical doctor, I'm an inventor. And so if a woman had just given birth and wanted to use our patches to support recovery, um, then I would recommend that she get permission from her doctor. Uh, we certainly believe our patches to be safe, um, but she would need to get permission from her doctor. So that would be the first thing. The second thing in terms of recovery after childbirth, um, of course, we would want to emphasize that people would focus on having a healthy diet. Uh, a woman could slowly get back into exercise. And then, of course, make sure that she's getting adequate rest. Um, the things that I would recommend would first be the X39 patch on the back of the neck because it has so many amazing benefits. And I would also recommend the use of the energy patches. Now, we would apply the energy patches either to the bottom of the feet or we would apply them just by the collarbone. And these points uh, in acupuncture would be called kidney one and kidney 27. And these points are especially effective uh, because they help to support and build up the life energy. And that's, that's of course more in uh, Eastern terms, in Western terms, what we actually find is that uh, there are uh, connections at these points to the kidneys and the kidneys act to store a tremendous amount of uh, electromagnetic energy in the body. And so by using either of these points, we boost the total flow of energy through the body, which helps all of the systems. So those are two simple things that people could do to support their overall recovery. Well, perfect, David, my gosh, we got through so many great questions tonight and thank you so much for sharing your insights and knowledge. I know sometimes you get thrown questions that most people probably wouldn't know how to answer. So thank you for just being so knowledgeable and sharing your insights and understanding of the human body with us. Wow, well, thanks, happy to do it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone uh, that's been on the call tonight. You know, we love that you are plugging into LifeWave Connect, you're plugging into our community, and we really do appreciate you participating in this call and bringing great questions to David. We'll definitely be doing another session like this in the future. Uh, I know that David really enjoys being able to uh, share his information, knowledge, and really helping us to understand how we utilize LifeWave technology to the best of our ability so we can live these great lives and really focus on reversing age and improving our quality each and every day. So again, thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll be we'll be here again next week uh, for our LifeWave Connect business session. Uh, we have Charlotte Watts, one of our presidential directors here in North America, speaking with us on consistency. So you won't want to miss that. And again, we really appreciate you being here. Thanks for all you do. Thanks for being the best part of our LifeWave community. And we'll talk to you all again soon. Bye-bye now.